families in the UK are shrinking. Most of us now have two or less. But some extraordinary families are bucking the trend. I used to come home from work, knackered, and she said, I want another baby all the time. Having 10, 12, or even 16 kids. I think they'll stop having babies at 20, 30. In this brand new series, we get up close with Britain's biggest families. My mum's crazy because she's had loads of kids. <laughs> from births to weddings, christenings and festivals, and everyday family life. Some people say we're mad because we've had so many children, and there are times when I think they're absolutely right. <laughs> Where meals are like feeding time at the zoo... Don't stand on the shopping! <laughs> ..and getting them to bed's the job from hell. In the bed, now. Tonight, two families count the cost of raising so many kids. They say that having one child costs you £108,000 a lifetime. That's just for one child. The Radfords embark on ever more costly adventures. Please let me show you to your room. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we meet the Salibs. People do think I'm a buddy, I'm a sponger, I'm a scrounger, or whatever. Let them think what they want. Whose finances are stretched to such a limit that emotions are running high. My heart is very broken inside. But the parents of Britain's biggest families still want more. Sometimes I do think, oh, God, when's she going to stop? I don't think we're ever going to stop, are we? It's the start of a new chapter for Britain's biggest family. <laughs> We're excited. Sue and Noel Radford recently announced the birth of baby Casper, swelling their ranks to a coach load of 16 kids. That's it. Oh, that's a one. The Radfords' baby-making antics have become so notorious, they've been invited down to London to appear on morning television. The Radfords are Britain's biggest family living under the one roof. Yeah. Now, a lot of you will be watching at home today and say, yeah, oh, this is all very fine and good, but we are paying for this. But the thing is, you're not actually. These people have their own business. They work. You're a baker, Noel. Yeah. Yeah. People's perception with big families is they don't work, they've got no intention of working, and they're just quite happy to just claim every benefit under the sun. Not, not all big families are like that. There are a lot of big families out there that do work, and they work hard. First question goes to Mum and Dad, Noel and Sue, and I ask you in all sincerity, have you worked out what's causing all this? <laughs> Back in the Radfords' hometown of Morecambe on the Lancashire coast, the locals have got their own ideas about what's making the family multiply. The dad's a local baker, so maybe it's something he puts in the pies. <laughs> a little bit of spice. She's a remarkable woman, that's all I've got to say. She's remarkable. She needs a medal, cos I couldn't do it personally. I would. Sorry. <laughs> Away from the limelight, daily life in the Radfords' ten-bedroom ex-nursing home is far from glamorous. As well as baby Casper, there's another new addition. Eldest daughter Sophie has just had a baby with her boyfriend, giving her a newfound respect for her mum. When I was going through labour, it did really make me think about what she goes through all the time. Like... First thing I said to her is, what the heck are you doing going through it so many times? With Sophie's new family now living in the house, costs are mounting with 20 sets of clothes to wash and 20 mouths to feed. Stupid pram. We don't like this pram, do we? And for some of the other Radford kids, the novelty of new babies is starting to wear off. Tilly, just look where you're walking, darling. They come back with a baby at least once a year. It's not really different for us. Come on. Give it ten more weeks and me and Sophie have better another one that's in another ten weeks she tells that she's having a baby. Tilly, 
Peter Max, come on. I think Mum's addicted to babies. <laughs> right, Tilly, hold the pram. Max, hold the pram. She could go on and on and on. Even though Sue's 37, she's not planning on stopping anytime soon. Watch for the green man. Let's go. We'll definitely have another one next year, I think. I think definitely. We've sort of said, you know, when Sue gets to 40, we won't have any more. And we 40 might... 40 children? No, 40-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. Every time a new baby's born, it's a Radford tradition to splash out on a present for Sue. No, Luke, I don't trust you. Shh. Oi, don't say anything. She always gets the same thing, but this time it's a deluxe model. Shall I get it out first? Get out first, yeah. Yeah, go on. Open your eyes. Oh, my God. Do you like it? Yeah. Yes. A new buggy is just one of an ever-growing stream of costs. We got everyone. Noel works hard in the family bakery to pay for it all. And although his income is boosted by £160 a week in child benefits, he has to find ways to cut costs. Yeah, it's quite difficult, cos, you know, I do all this on my own. We don't employ a baker just to try and save a wage there. I don't really know how much it costs to raise a child. Come on, time to get up. They become more expensive, I guess, once they start secondary school, because that's when they're wanting more clothes, wanting pocket money. They say that having one child costs you around £180,000 a lifetime. That's just for one child. 16 kids of that a lifetime. I'm not even going to work that out. When we ask our mum and dad, are we rich? She go, mm, no. Mm, no. How can they afford to have so many children? I don't know. They have a bank card, don't they? Yeah, but you've got to have money to put on the bank card. Oh, yeah. Duh. It's not just financial sacrifices the family have to make. It is hard work, you know. We're not flush in any way like that, you know, where we can just go off and do what we want when we want. You know, we don't go out socialising, drinking, neither of us smoke. We haven't been to a pub for, blimey, must be at least 15 years, at least. I love cookies! <laughs> but there is one occasion on the horizon that the Radfords are planning to splash out on. Yes. Yes. Hi, I'm just inquiring about a christening. Um, for 11 children. Yes, for 11 children, and just wondering what the availability is. The oldest five kids were christened when they were babies, but since then, Sue and Noel have been so busy, they've not had time to christen the other 11. You'll never remember them all now. <laughs> but a mass christening for a supersized family doesn't come cheap. It's gonna be about five, 600 pound, I think. We try not to get carried away, but we want the kids to look nice, so then it's, you knew this and knew that, and, and then the costs do start to mount up, because then you'll have the children that don't need something saying, well, they're getting this and I want this. Mm. So you have to try and be a bit tough, really, but I'm a bit of a soft touch, I think, really. <laughs> Just an hour's drive away in Rochdale, another big family have money worries of their own. Relying on benefits, Mohammed and Noreen have a football team-sized brood of kids. There are five boys and six girls to feed and care for, ranging in age from five to 21. I think I've just followed what it says in the Bible, go forth and multiply. Meet the Salims. A supersized family needs a lot of space. Hi, hi, man. I'm Bismillah. Hi, Ibrahim. He's in the wrong garden. But for the Salims, money's so tight, they all have to squeeze into a small four bedroom terrace. How many are you two cooking for tonight? 413. 11 children and uh, two adults, so it's like the whole family. Come on, come, come on, on, the Michelle. food is ready. <laughs> Who's missing now? 
Normally you. <laughs> With no room for a big table, TV dinners are the norm. Who wants some more food? On the menu tonight is chicken, samosas and pizzas. All times by 13. Good Muslims, clean everything, put in your plate, eat it all up. Don't leave anything behind on the plate. I haven't got enough space in the house. It's crowded and cluttered. That's how we're used to. And we're very happy, the kids are very happy. They're healthy, happy, smiling. Tonight, the kids are in for a treat. They're watching Mohammed and Noreen's wedding video. Uh, look, watch. There's your mum, there's your daddy, and there's my nanny. Hey, listen, watch and see how your mum and dad got together to have you lot. Watch, look. Mohammed was 32 and Noreen 16 when their marriage was arranged by her grandfather in Pakistan. Your mother's going to start dancing in a minute, I think. I never imagined having a big family. I never imagined that. Because I didn't get married till I was pretty old. But I love children. They're really magic. In a month's time, it will be the most important event in the Salim's calendar year, the festival of Eid. Eid is really important. It's a really big part of our lives, and um, it's just our main Islamic celebration. The families get together and have some nice food, and uh, they have a chance to like talk to each other. It's also the most expensive time of year for the family. Either we get new clothes or buy presents, just like they do at Christmas. Hopefully my dad will give us some money. Mohammed's currently unemployed, but he's been putting a bit aside from his benefits each month to pay for Reed. It really blows up my budget. With 11 children to please, I have to spend a lot. Around about four, five hundred pounds is not far away from my expense for one Eid. Despite the cost of raising a big family, Mohammed still wants more kids. We're not looking for luxuries, we're not looking for big TV sets, we're not looking for big cars. We're not greedy in that sense, but I am greedy for more children uh, because, uh, because the love they give me, it's the love and it's the company. <laughs> When he was a little kid, he had no one to play with at all because he was the only kid. I don't think he wants us to go through that as well, so he's brought up so many brothers and sisters for us to not feel lonely like he did. But Mohammed's enthusiasm is not shared by his wife. Mohammed want more one. He said, I want three, four, five more. I want a big family, I want another kid. I'm pleading with her, I want another baby. For Noreen, the prospect of adding yet another hungry mouth to an already financially stretched family is becoming more than she can take. Dad, leave it. Leave it, I'll stop it. He said, I want more. He said, you can look after these children. And you want more children. Go on, say yes. Don't put that. You go on, say yes, say yes. Tell them which one. While many families struggle to make ends meet, when you're supersized, money worries multiply. With 16 kids, the Radfords rarely splash out. But with a mass christening on the horizon, they're willing to make an exception. Today, they've descended on Morecambe for a shopping trip. When you're all out and about, it's a bit like going on a school trip. You can see people actually counting them, and they do that all the time. You're having to keep so many children under control and maybe one's wandering off and you've got to have eyes in the back of your head to, to keep them all contained. Sometimes you think, wow, you know, people with just two children, yeah, they've got it very easy. It's very hard to deal with 16 children. You know, I've got only one, I can't deal with one, never mind 16. Can I put the gloves back, please? The advantages of all I can see is when you are old, there is at least some people to look after you. What disadvantage? Where is your life's gone? Katie, please, can you just stop here today? Today's task and expense is to buy traditional christening gowns for some of the kids. Is that for Oscar? No, no, Oscar and Casper. Where'd you go trying them on over there? By adding to their family, the couple are having to look for even more ways to cut costs. Come here, 
then. We do actually put money aside. We're constantly putting money into a different account. We're quite good at doing that, and I do that religiously. But big events like christenings and things like that, then, yeah, you, you do have to be careful with money and how you spend it. Dad Noel holds the purse strings and has to make tough decisions on spending. Not all of them are going to be getting new outfits. There's only Casper and Oscar that are getting the new christening gowns. <laughs> As for the rest, I'll just be wearing what we've got in the cupboards and in the wardrobes. Because there's so many of us, Mum and Dad can't get us that many presents. All the children in small families might get more presents than us. If you have three people, they get a lot. It's not fair. Come on, come on. It's not just big events that drain the finances. When you've 16 children, paying to clothe, feed and house them is a daily challenge. Thank you very much. After the mortgage, food is one of the Radford's biggest costs. And to stop their supersized brood eating them out of house and home, Sue does a daily supermarket shop. We don't do a big shop once a week. We go every day, every day. What we found was if we were doing a big shop once a week, kids would just eat and eat and eat and eat. So it just works out cheaper for us if we go every day, really. Hey, Noel, are we doing all right? Yeah, that's bad. Come pick up the order. Noel has set a weekly £250 limit for groceries. Still only got 16 kids then? Yeah, just the 16. And to cut down on food waste, calculates exactly how much he needs for each meal. The old ones will have maybe four fish fingers, and then it sort of goes down a little bit to maybe three and two. Yeah, and all worked out that we'd probably go through about 50, so... Cos they come in packs of 20, we'll have probably have ten left over. It's a couple of meals, two That's meals, I think. Keep it going for a couple of days. I suppose I am quite good at my 16 times table because when I'm out buying anything, I do try and work out how much it might cost. I times it by 16. I think I just find myself doing it anyway without even realising. I can quite comfortably make a meal for everybody for around £10 for everybody. I quite often work out how much it's cost because I'm a bit that way inclined. I like to sort of work things out like that. And then I think just see if there's any ways that I can perhaps save. The key to the Radfords being able to afford and enjoy their big family is division of labour. Sue does most of the childcare and household chores, which include nine loads of washing and a heap of ironing every day. Whilst Noel brings in the money from the family bakery and at home is head chef why our family works and why our marriage works is because everything that we do is teamwork. Some people might say, you know, we're a well-oiled machine. If that teamwork wasn't there, then it would be a lot harder. That's not good. I've got a spare plate. So I've run out of pies. Tea time! In Rochdale, the Salims are also preparing for a very special occasion. The Eid celebration they're hosting in their home in four weeks' time. Mum Noreen wants the kids to look their best. We do need some nice fancy clothes, so Mum will buy some new clothes and some new shoes and some new jewellery sets and everything. Yeah, I want this one. All right, you do that. Mom will give me the bill, he said, going to buy the children's shoes. Look at that one. Ten pound each. Telephone bill, gas bill, electric bill. Back home, Mohammed's worrying about how he's going to pay for everything. The gas one, uh, 590 pounds, 48 pence. <laughs> What's this? Providing for his kids is a daily struggle for unemployed Mohammed. The downside of having a big family is the cost. 
feeding them, really? paying bills. Yeah, but we'll put this back the shed. So it's got its negatives when you have this feeling, oh, plumbing neck, it's so expensive. I've got my CV here, typed up, a lot of application. When his first nine children were born, Mohammed had a teaching job. But it's been seven years since he last worked. So this is a temporary. Seven years I've been applying for jobs. I've had few interviews, but none of the interviews materialised and I've had no joy, no luck whatsoever. So this is going now, hopefully. Send it through and hope for the best. The family own their own home, but receive £680 per week in benefits. Come on, darling, are you helping me, sweetheart? We've got to check. I'll, I'll put the oil in. What's the name? Put your foot on there. I want more children. It's not to do with the benefits of trying to get more money out of the government. I want children because I love children and their company. People do think I'm a baddie, I'm a sponger, I'm a scrounger, whatever. Let them think what they want. Having so many kids and relying on benefits has made the family a target for abuse. I think people do find it a bit shocking, you know, to hear that there's a big family because it's not really normal, is it? So, yeah, people do say a lot of things. Yeah, my children do get grief. School, in the streets, they get called names. Oh, your dad doesn't work, you're on benefits. People who don't like me, they give me grief about my family. <laughs> they ask me questions. How much time does your mum and dad had sex? But I just ignore them and just get on with my work and just walk away. You want some more in that? They do get upset now and again, but they're very resilient because I've brainwashed them into believing that they're only jealous. You're happy, you've got a big family, you love each other, and it's just all boiling down to just jealousy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's your turn now. In Morecambe, the Radfords' big family is causing more than just a financial headache. After a long search, Sue and Noel have managed to find a church willing to perform their mass christening. Hello, hello, I'm Mike. You are Luke. Luke. James. James, nice to meet you, James. No. Hi, no. Uh, yes, hi there. I've never had a family quite this large. A lot of the children came past me tonight. I think there were about seven or eight, which means there's about the same again at home. So it's going to be quite an interesting crowd when we get everyone together. And I just hope I can remember all the names in the right order. Hey. Ellie and Josh. Josh. Josh, fantastic. Wow, what a great crowd. <laughs> but the sheer number of kids anyway, has thrown up an unforeseen to problem. To the, to the nice there's usually between two and four godparents per, per candidate. So. Uh, Multiplying up, that's quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> We've got to find 22 godparents. We don't have 22 friends that we'd want to be, you know, godparents. Come and find a seat and I'll sort things out with you in a minute. No, 22 is just, no, it's just not going to happen really, is it? Back at home, the Radfords have even more pressing concerns. The birth of baby number 16, Casper, has prompted Sue and Noel to address the kids' sleeping arrangements. <laughs> Come on, girls. Get up. We've got all these bedrooms, but most of the kids all want to share. Come on. They all pile into one bedroom, so my plan is to build a bunk bed that sleeps six, and then that way, if they do want to all be in one room, at least they've got a, a, a bed for themselves. Jobs around the house, DIY, I'll always tackle myself. One, I like it, I enjoy it, I love doing it. And the second is cost saving. With all of Noel's time taken up working in the bakery and building the bunk beds, <laughs> Sue's workload has doubled and the couple's normal routine has gone out the window. Luke! What? Can you come and peel up the carrots, please? Max, get off there. If the team side of it isn't working, if Noel's got something that he needs to get on with and he's not around, then, yeah, it does tend to get a little bit crazy. <laughs> with Sue unable to give all the kids the attention they're used to, they've started playing up. <laughs> to 
make matters worse, baby Casper has got colic and is only happy when he's in his mother's arms. For eldest daughter Sophie, who recently became a first-time mum, it's a rare glimpse of Sue being stressed. No, don't touch. The odd time, she does struggle a bit. It's only when the kids don't do as they're told. Watch, she... Mummy's got a sharp knife here. When it all gets too much, it all gets far too much for me. Hey, Tilly. Hey? Tilly, just don't tell him. Mummy's got a very sharp knife. But with 16 kids to look after, chaos is never far away. I don't know how she copes with them all. I think one's enough at the moment. Josh, that's a right mess, isn't it? Well, then you come and say, Mummy, I spilt my chocolate cake on the floor. I don't trample in it all. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I always think she's mad. I don't know why she does it. Get in that bed now. It's like when I babysit, I feel like I'm going to go bald eventually because it's just that much stress. <laughs> a 16th baby may just have pushed Sue a step too far. I'm not coming up here again. For Britain's biggest broods, family celebrations can be a logistical as well as financial challenge. <laughs> For the Radfords, just getting all 16 of their kids together in one room takes some doing. Sophie, can you just move up then? Don't panic, nothing to panic about. Whatever it is, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the 11 youngest kids are due to be christened in two weeks' time and the tradition is for each child to have two godparents. It's going to be quite difficult to get 22 godparents. We don't know that many people, but, you know, the people that you do know, would you actually want them to be godparents to your children? <laughs> Noel and Sue think they have the perfect solution. Uh, we just, we'd just like to ask you and Chloe, really. Yeah, definitely. I'm up for that. Be godparents yeah. to your brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that our children can be godparents. And I think it'll be nice for the older children to be godparents as well, because they really want to be, don't they? Yeah, they so I so definitely. it's worked yeah. out really well. Yeah. Should we put all the names in a hat uh -huh. and you can draw them out or something? <laughs> well, <I haven't> <laughs> me! me. 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 <laughs> now, Max, me. do you want to be with me? No. <laughs> now that the godparents' dilemma is solved, Noel turns his attention to his wife. After 16 kids, one grandchild and organising daily life, the couple haven't spent a night away from the children for years. Is that nice, Oscar? <laughs> We've realised over the past few weeks that me and Noel need to spend time as a couple as well as, you know, spending time with the kids. Yeah, I think the last time we've gone away, we've been on our honeymoon together, which is just over 20 years ago. Sue's in for a treat. Although Noel has already dipped into their savings pot to pay for the christening, He's dipping in again to book a night away. He is, however, saving money on childcare by calling on the help of the grandparents and eldest daughter, Sophie. Luckily, Sue's mum and dad are taking three away, and they're the, the, the three noisy ones. And when they go, it does make a big difference, so yeah. it should make it quite a lot easier yeah, for you, honey. Yeah, I'm quite look. happy that they're... Oh, I'm not being nasty, but it's quite nice that they're going. <laughs> it's a bit of a novelty, really, so... He better not take me somewhere in the minibus and like go and stop at a chip, fish and chips shop somewhere and say, right, this is your date night. <sighs> oh, which one? So there's one. one on the right. Just take the other one, just in case. Do you not think that's, that's a bit canary fine, isn't it? No, it's not canary, no, it's just sexy. Take that. that. Let's get your sexy knickers in there. <laughs> 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 yeah. I have to put my sexy underwear in, won't I? Yes. Okay. Oh, God! <laughs> no, that's not. No, stop! stop. God! Let's keep that between you and Dad. Okay. We're off! The Radford's 15 seater minibus has also got the night off. Instead, Noel has splashed out on a two seater rental car. <gasps> I'm a bit excited. Woo hoo hoo hoo! <laughs> oh my god. I'm excited because like they haven't been out on their own in like however many years. So it'll be nice for them, a nice little break from us all. <laughs> so this is like my carriage then, is it? Yeah. Oh. Carriage of weight. 
<laughs> it's nice. Right, so where are we going then? Chester. How are we? Right, come on. Let's get sorted. Come on. <laughs> oh, hang on. See, he's a little bit romantic, isn't he? <laughs> I'm hoping that we enjoy it because it'd be a bit different for us because we're all, you know we're obviously used to all the noise and everything that comes with a big family all the time. So it's going to be a bit a bit weird, I think. I think we might be a bit lost on what to do. Dear, Bye. Get washed in! Bye. <laughs> what do you think? My heart might to drive off in your nice car. Hello! Okay. Well, oh, yeah. Miss Cardi! <laughs> In Rochdale, the Eid celebration is fast approaching. The Salims are worried their house is not ready for the party they've planned. Hey, come on, please. Unable to afford a bigger home, all 13 of them have to fight for space in their small four-bedroom terrace, and it can get messy. They decide to have a clear out. Can you find the shoe, darling? Which one were you looking for? You've got one. Is it anywhere? Right, throw them all there. I don't think we're a tidy family at all. <laughs> this is our main area where the kids have their clothes. Noreen has us. You know, it's all a mixture. I think my mum is really affected by the mess in the house. She'll get really depressed when she sees it, so we try our best to keep it neat, but the kids will mess up again. Yeah, move it then. With Eid looming, Mohammed comes up with a plan. Come on, we're here. Akia, Akia. <laughs> he thinks their salvation may lie in flat-packed furniture. Come on, everybody. Oh, automatic, oh, automatic door. Oh, Ika, here we are. Oh, Ika, oh, Ika. Oh, Ika. Oh, <laughs> hey, nice in here. Oh, so oh, let's get oh, 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 We're there now. We're there. Okay, wait, 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 please. We'll all go off together. Wait. Okay. Oh, it's closing again. Look at this house. I love this house. Oh, hello, lady. It's very nice to see you again. Mariam, you look sound to be very comfortable there. I thought it would be nice to have That That's what I'm saying, my room, isn't it? You want that one? The kids like what they see, but when you have 11 children and no job, the cheapest option is the most attractive. It's £135, is it? That's a lot of money, isn't it? Back at home, all they have to do now is tidy the clutter away into their new wardrobes. Who's going to give me a helping hand today with their big muscles? I'm going to give you a baggage. No, no. And then you can fill it with your rubbish. You've got to put it in the skip. Well, you're the first one to be jumped in the skip. Please. You can, you want to put me in the skip as well, darling. I thought you loved me. <laughs> we don't. Come on, darling. Come on, we've got a lot to do today. Mohammed enlists the help of the kids. <laughs> oh. no. 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 By the time they tackle their mountain of clothes, it's every child for themselves. What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah, the kid. When you get to that situation when it's all getting on to you and you say, bloody hell, I want to walk away from this. Sometimes you haven't got even a chance to scratch your head. Many times I have thought, I, said, I just want to walk away and go and have a free, easy life. Should we can stop it, please? Yeah. Yes, you, you need this cupboard for the hang up with a new Yeah, no, I'm going to. Mohammed's not the only one at the end of his tether. Noreen's fed up with their cramped living conditions and lack of money. You have no job and I'm it's suffering baby. with you. My children are suffering with you. There's no job, it's very shameful. I want the children, I'm going to private school, going to my children. But um, I, I can manage, I can. Despite having several degrees, Mohammed hasn't worked for the last seven years. You have a PhD, seven degrees, no job, and if you have going to a nice job, you have a ten bedroom home. I want my pleasure. I give them my everyone. I my son, daughter, give them each, each room. My wish is Allah is good. God is good. God, but I mean, God is good. God knows how to you do like that. God give the hand free, and you said you do. You have the hand. You have the feet. 
You do something, you don't need a job. You have to do something taxi like that, you have to show up. It's good, is it? If you try, you try, you do not try, and you're asking, you make doctor of philosophy selling chocolates. My heart is very broken inside. You never know is what, what is my inside, or what I'm thinking for my children, my, myself. Me? I... What are you thinking? What are you thinking? For the future, thinking what is doing in the future. What is the, my children growing like that? But my dream is going to the... Arriving in Chester for their date night, Noel has pulled out all the stops for the couple's first night away in 20 years. How are you? Fine. Me and Noel met when we were, oh, probably when we were about eight. Welcome to the Queen Hotel, you're very welcome. It's lovely. We started going out together when I was about 13. <gasps> Thank you. And then obviously we had Chris when I was 14. And then Sophie came along. And then we had Chloe and I think to sort of Spiral from there, really. We just enjoyed it so much, we've carried on. Let me show you to your room, huh? follow me. I know a lot of people that have children at a young age, their relationship just doesn't last. But with us, it's, it made us stronger and, um, yeah, we stuck together. So here we are. Please come on in. Now, I realise at the moment it's 16, but <laughs> <coughs> we were hoping that number 17 <laughs> would perhaps um, happen here at the Queen's. So we put you in a little pack. We have these sort of romantic seduction packs. Um, and in there, you ha in here, you have everything you need for number 17. Um, <laughs> there is titillating massage oil. There's a um, intimate fragrance-free wipes. There is actually a condom in there, so I'll, I'll take that away. I won't leave that, I won't leave that in. All right. And that's it. So, so have, have a wonderful stay. OK, nice to see you. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. Do you want me to leave you with the comments? <laughs> no, 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 no. <gasps> wow. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Back at the Radfords family home, with the parents away, the kids will play. Blake, Millie, stop it now. No! It doesn't fit me, I ever want in my bed. Can someone please grab Casper? This is bliss. But it'll be a bit crazy at home at the minute, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> that is very good. Yeah. Mm. Millie, it's your bedtime. Quick, get a nappy out. I'll put your nappy on. <laughs> that is good, isn't it? Mm. Till they go get into bed, ready? Two down, 88 to go. Kids, I'm not having any more than one. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to add more kids? Yeah. We'll let you know next month. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll stop having babies at 20, 30. 30. You said 30. No. <laughs> if that happens, I'll be leaving the house. Are we organised? Yeah! The biggest and most expensive day of the Salim's calendar year has finally arrived. The Eid celebration. Yeah, now we've got space, open space. I can stretch my arms. Are you happy? I'm sorted. Is it sorted? Are you happy with that? OK, darling. With much of the clutter put away, the house is finally ready for the party they're hosting for neighbours and relatives. We're used to having people here all the time, which is nice. We've got 11 children, big family, mashallah, we're busy anyway. So extra two or three mouths won't make a difference to us. Mohammed and Noreen have spent a total of £100 kitting their kids out with new clothes. It really blows up my budget. I have to spend a lot. 
and with 11 children to please, it is costly. Today I'm going to be fun because I'm going to get easy. That means money. that we could get lots of money. Our family, our cousins, our relatives all come together and it'd be like a big, um, like a fun day for us. It's loud, crazy and it's a big celebration. Hey, you look very nice today, hey. <laughs> Are we right for a, you know, hey? <laughs> Hard to jump, <laughs> Right, go get sorted. In Morecambe, it's also a big day for the Radfords. I think we've got about an hour and a half before we have to leave for the christening lime ironing outfits. To save money, Noel is in charge of the catering. Just a few more sandwiches to make, the cake to get ready, put together. I think we're going to be ready on time, Katie. Never yeah. are ready on time. It takes such a long time to get these all ready. I usually tend to spend about five minutes, if that, getting myself ready. Are you too excited today? Yep. Yeah. Good. A christening happens in a church, and then the vicar puts a cross in your head. It is hard work getting organised for something like today, so... But it's definitely worth it. Oh, the door! Let me get the door! Oh, the pocket! For the Salims, the e party is a much needed chance to unwind from the pressures of daily life. With my family, I make sure they're happy to get something good, something new, and they take part in uh, enjoying the Eid celebrations. We believe that our real wealth is our children. It's God's blessing, and I'm really thankful to him. I'm the most wealthiest man on earth. Despite the cost and hard work involved in organising the party, Mohammed's keener than ever to have more kids. When we have this lovely day, no hassle from the kids and they're all loving and buzzing around you and you say, oh, brilliant, you know, having a good time. It encourages you, it puts that thought into you. You want more children, that's because we love children. And I'm hopeful we, we have got the space for a new baby and I'm hoping God gives us a baby, that's what I pray for. Britain's biggest family are splashing out and making local history in front of all their family and friends. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Morecambe Parish Church for this wonderful baptism service today of many members of the Radford family. Today is certainly something very different to anything that I've done before. Casper Theo, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a very proud moment to see all the children up there and Sophie and Chloe being the godparents. Oscar Will, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I was going to have the boys, and Sophie was going to have the girls. James Edward, I baptise you in the name of the Father, I like so as having Sophie as a godmother. It's good. I have no idea who my godchildren are. There's just so many. Tilly May, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Casper's definitely one. I know that. Josh, Max, and Ellie. Max, Joseph, I baptise you in the name of the Father. Do you know that man that did that? Only a little bit more to look. Josh Benjamin, I baptise you in the name of the Father. Amy Elizabeth, I baptise you in the name of the Father. Ellie May, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son. It were a miracle. We had to get a cross on our heads. A cross on our heads. Katie Louise, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> oh, you got a good slosh then, didn't you? And he was putting the water on my head, it went all over me. Did you go up to, to there? It went there. 
Millie Jo, I baptise you in the name of the Father. There was nothing nervous, it was really funny. Luke James, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Casper, Oscar, Tilly, Max, Josh, Amy, Ellie, James, Katie, Millie and Luke, we welcome you into the Fellowship of Faith. I don't think there's any, any uh, divine policy on big families, no. Although there are plenty of big families in the Bible. Most people have rather smaller ones these days. I think we did well. <laughs> it was lovely. It was a really nice service and the vicar's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, it's good. I am just a tad bit excited about the massive, great big, huge chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got it. Mm -hmm. I love the cake, what we had. Mm. What cake? Delicious. Max, do you want your little cake? It's been a big success, but some of the extended family are hoping it's the last Radford christening. I hope it's limited to 16, because Christmas and birthdays and Easter eggs and holiday money, it gets quite expensive. But no, I hope, I hope they sit back now and enjoy the ones that they've got. Sue and Noel have other ideas. I don't think we're ever going to stop, are we? My parents, My parents are rich because we've got so many babies, lovely children.